you want to learn how to get rid of a lower back pain naturally without those harmful medications, without those painkillers, those opioidic drugs, and all the other ways that people are telling you to go about it. Hey guys, my name is Michael Granados and I am the owner of Remove Back Pain. I'm here to help you and I've helped out many other people um, get rid of their aching back pain from acute, subacute, chronic to sciatic pain. Um, I'm somebody who's been through this myself. I've had my own flares. I've had my own chronic pain, uh, degenerative disc. I've had a herniated disc. I've had sciatic problems myself. Um, not to go too far into that, but, you know, I've had my own problems. And, you know, I, I know when it comes to back pain, you know, what to do to get rid of it, what your options are, and just what you specifically should be doing, okay? There are things to do, there are things not to do. And I'm sure you've heard of this before. There are conservative treatments out there that you should stay away from. Um, it's not the time for it, but it's all a matter of when. That's really what it is. It's a matter of when. Um, not so much what, but when. Because I'm sure you have heard about things already that are out there. And I'm here to go ahead and uncover that truth. And at the end of this video, I'm going to also go ahead and show you, um, I think one thing that I created that is really going to help you. Like it's really going to take the things you don't know about treating your pain every single day to being able to help yourself on a daily basis. So that's, what's going to, I'm going to be uh, revealing to you at the very end of this, if you stick around. So I have an article here. I created an article. Um, about how to relieve your lower back pain naturally, right? And so this is what I'm going to be covering right now for the next couple of minutes. And I'm going to go through this article just to lay out uh, like the 10 plus ways to relieve your uh, lower back pain naturally. Um, so if you stick with me for the duration of this, I'm sure it's going to be worth your time um, and worth your knowing. So there's me with my family just hanging out during New Year's time, feeling better um, and going through this. You know, I talked to you about how I went through my own trials and tribulations, um, you know, going through medications, going through uh, different conservative treatments together and figuring out what worked, what doesn't work um, and filtering that out. Um, and just knowing what acute inflammation does, um, it's more of a fast onset and that you have to go about that in a different manner. Um, and I talk about here how it's the physical signs of a bruise, a scar or a wound. Uh, you have chronic inflammation, which begins slow and steady between three to four days. Uh, that's when you can expect it sooner or later. Um, and that stays around for some time. And you don't see any kind of flare-ups and all that. And I have a different video on that below. So you can also check that uh, stuff out. And if this is the first time, make sure you subscribe so I can go ahead and uh, you can go ahead and see more of these videos that I come out with. So this is just, you know, my knowledge, my experience, my expertise in the back pain subject. Um, and knowing it very well through my own experiences and my own um, education in it. And just going through here that um, you should know that there's things like ice and heat, uh, changing your diet, taking the right enzymes in your body, and then using mind and body techniques. So I'm going to be covering that as I go along here. Um, inclu including that too, you should be able to understand appropriate exercising um, understand how to eat properly, how to treat your mind, and how to use these natural remedies, which is what I'm going to include. Um, and we're going to get started on that right now. Um, so one question before that, though, is what do you do when you are overcoming surgery or you are between thinking about going into surgery? Um, there's going to be obviously a different approach. You might not think about it holistically at the time or after. Um, so our immediate reaction when we have a herniated disc, ankylosing spondyl uh, spondylolisthesis, um, when we have all these other things like arthritis in our back, um, all these other symptoms and all these other conditions, we always tend to think the worst one without getting maybe an MRI, an x-ray, right? You should be doing that. Um, the first thing you always want to do is make sure you're talking to your doctor and you are consulting and figuring this out. Um, because they'll help you, they'll point you in a direction and let you know that, okay, we need you to do uh, physical therapy, we should have you do this afterwards. But a lot of that also 
can backfire. And I think maybe some of you who have gone through this understand it, and I've gone through it myself, that once you go through this rehabbing stage, it's like you just go down a spiral of feeling like you're left out. Like, what else should I do? I've tried to... Um, I've tried these painful medications. They haven't worked. I've tried a heating pad that hasn't worked. I've tried a massage that's not working. I've tried all these different routes and it's like, they're not going to work. And yet some of those don't, and then some of them will, but it's just a matter of how and when. Okay. So number one being Okay, cold and heat therapy. Okay, this is one way that you should naturally be going about healing your pain. This is probably the most obvious one. Um, within those, you know, 48 hours to 72 hours, um, sometimes you can include 24 hours can be fine if it's just a very minute, acute flare up. But after those 48 to 72 hours, you should be heating your back. So between 48 hours, 72 hours, you should be thinking about using a cold pack, right? Using a cold pack to um, cause the swelling to go down. And then with the heating pack, you're going to be promoting uh, more blood circulation through uh, around your vessels and through around your back and through the ligaments and through the other areas that are on your lower back, such as your hamstrings, um, your thighs, your hips, um, legs, etc. Okay, so that's what you need to be doing immediately. And obviously, it differs if you have more chronic flare-up. If this is not an acute flare-up, um, most of the time, you're going to be wanting to use just a heating pad, right? Use a heating pad for a day. It should work just fine. Um, integrate that every single day um, if you're going the heating pad route, and that'll help you. And again, I'm going to let you know on my secret at the very end of this how you can actually understand when it's time to use a heating pad versus uh, maybe something else, when to let it go, and so forth. Again, the heat will circulate oxygen, um, just like water does. And I mean, that's another way I'm going to get to, which is later on. But using water is also a great source to provide nutrients and proper blood flow, right? So they can get through the capillary, so they can get through every single uh, vessel, every, all the veins, and push out the blood to circulate around your body. Number two, this is a big one, exercising. Exercising is a huge one that many people um, avoid. They know it's there, but they avoid it. And you might be there too, or um, you've tried just about everything. It doesn't work. You still have pain. Uh, but maybe you're not doing it correctly. There are certain ways that you should be exercising to get the most effective amount out of it. Um, just so first of all, what I like to tell people is, when you encounter this pain and inflammation, take a seat, relax, okay? Take a second to calm your mind, okay? Because when you do everything scattered, it doesn't come together. You can be doing more damage to your body. Uh, your muscles, they need the strengthening and flexibility. Um, so if acute pain happens, you know, you should be doing a bit of stretching. Um, you don't have to do it consistently over days if it's just an acute flare-up, but you should be taking care of your muscles and your joints no matter what. So before you exercise, after you exercise, make sure you're stretching and you're getting that flexibility in. Otherwise, um, this can become more of a constant issue and you're going to be having more flare-ups. Then those flare-ups, when you don't take care of them, become chronic. So I've listed here, you have yoga. Okay, yoga is the number one way. Um, yoga is what I do. I still do it just about every day um, in the mornings to afternoons to evenings to nights. Um, and I have a routine of doing this and I'm going to give that to you to be able to use in your daily life, whether it's acute to chronic pain, how to go about that. And here I just talk about how it strengthens, we think about how it strengthens our bodies, uh, but also it strengthens your mind. Yoga and exercising together um, is the most powerful tool you can use. Um, if you're not utilizing this, it really should be something you use in your daily life and really start implementing this because you're going to start seeing the changes uh, thereafter, day in and day out. A natural, natural way number three, uh, this is one we don't know, and this is one that you and maybe a whole bunch of people don't know about yet, is sleeping properly, right? Sleep like a baby. You don't want to go to bed at night at three o'clock, four o'clock, tussling around um, if you're already sleeping and having problems. 
And if you do, that's really going to lead to insomnia, which is a whole other topic. Um, but it's also going to make you groggy in the mornings. And in the mornings, um, you don't think too much when you're feeling groggy, right? I've been there. You get up in the morning and then you feel like, you know, you have a backache now. You just barely lifted and now you're feeling groggy and then you have a backache. So then you end up doing something you shouldn't, right? You end up getting off the bed in a way that's going to be uh, deconstructive. And then that hurts your body even more. You forget about stretching, you forget about doing the little things, and then you go on with your day if you can. All right, so sleeping like a baby, it's going to really improve your cognitive thinking and it's going to improve your physical functions, right? Um, which I just went over. Uh, number four, you can improve your posture correctly, which is naturally uh, what we tend to go away from when we have back pain, right? When we have back pain, we tend to go like this. We tend to hunch one way or the other. Forward, yes, but more so to the left or to the right. I know I still have that habit when I sit down to eat dinner or I do anything else. Or when I go to type, um, I still have, you know, this uh, non-equilibrial um, way of turning. So improving your posture correctly is going to really make the difference. So I go over here, and this is the article that you can actually go over to, which will be in the description. Um, so make sure you go over that. It's more, descri it's more descriptive and it goes more into sp uh, specifics. So whether you're doing this at work, there are different ways of doing it. You can just go here. If you're at home, you can do this. If you're just out walking, you know, you'd be able to click through these and get through them. Um, and these demonstrate a whole bunch of different ways for each and every se single section. So if you're at work, um, I have a whole different article for that. So you can stand up straight, um, not have to spend on things, right? Not have. That's what I'm here to make sure you do. You don't have to spend. Figure out what is working or figure out what you need to do to make it work and then go from there. And then I go through ways of how to demonstrate that. Uh, releasing endorphins. Okay, be happy about things in life. Smile at every minute you get. Um, don't, feel, don't feel down on yourself. Don't feel down on life. Life is great. It's about our perspective and how we make it out. Um, this is grasply going to improve your behavior and the way you respect yourself. Stop consistently blaming yourself because this isn't your fault. These are just natural occurrences that have had to happen. And now you're in a place where you feel like there's nobody helping you out. Sometimes you feel like physical therapy isn't the route. Sometimes you feel like just going to your doctor and getting prescribed another medication isn't helping. And truthfully, it isn't, okay? When, when big pharma's gone in the way of everything, it slowly becomes a mainstream thing. So really, Understanding your habits, understanding the lack of discipline that you have, all the distractions, TV, people, sitting down, um, going from one event to the next, and thinking that this can't happen to you, but it can. You just got to take in things one step at a time, as I had, um, and focus on one thing at a time, and you'll be fine. Um, and I go in through it here, how I can relate. I'm here to talk about water. Here's another way. Uh, massage therapy, meditation, dark chocolate. If you don't know about that one, it goes into more detail. Then. Uh, no, number six, uh, chiropractic care. Okay. And chiropractic care is one that you're usually um, told about, one, one that you're usually made aware of. Um, and it does help to a degree, but after you're done with that, you know, with spinal manipulation, um, you should also be taking care of yourself. You, you shouldn't just rely on one conservative, conservative treatment that way and think that because now that your back feels more loose and less stiffened and your muscles have the oxygen um, to be able to properly flow and let you function physically, that you should just go and sit down and do things at a different way. Because the more you this is all about muscle imbalances and having a good muscle balance. If you go home after chiropractic care and you just sit down, you're going to weaken those muscles. You're going to weaken your glutes. You're going to weaken your hamstrings. You're going to weaken the muscles around your um, spine. You're going to, you're just going to weaken all these joints and all that stuff you put into it is not really going to matter. And again, I'm going to show you how you can get access to all that stuff later on um, in a couple minutes here. Uh, so massage, massages work. I know they help me. Um, I don't go to a massage therapist so much anymore. I use my own. Um, I have my own handheld massager, my seat massagers. Um, and I can do that from time to time. I don't always rely on it. 
the point of this is not to have to rely on these conservative treatments. I mean, if you can just do it from time to time and get away from it, um, that's the point I want to help you get to. Um, acupuncture, okay, an old Chinese method. Um, it, it's okay. I mean, I, I think it helps to a degree if you have more chronic pain. Uh, for those of us who have less, you know, of that chronic pain nowadays, um, it could still help out, but it wouldn't be something I rely on. Capsaicin cream, okay. Um, you know, what you find in chilies. This is really going to help you release your nerve pressure, right? A lot of people use capsaicin, and I still use capsaicin to this day to relieve that sciatic pain, um, to use it for relieving um, my pre and post workouts. You know, when you put a little bit of the menthol stuff that you put on the back, it heats up, so it becomes more of that capsaicin. And it blocks the pain signals to your brain, which is pretty amazing. Um, you can find these naturally. There's some that... I try to stay away from the creams nowadays that have um, all the chemicals in them. This is about how you do it naturally. Arnica, so it's a famous plant. Um, this is one that you can also use, and it's usually common in a, in a, in a cream form, so you can find that in the creams, um, topical creams, and it's also an alternative to being able to use NSAIDs, drugs, and once you curve off like opioids, you can use this to help you in your day-to-day -day so you can get to the next point in your life. And I just go ahead and go in through more detail here. I relieves arthritis, joint pain, muscle soreness, swelling, and there's so much more too. Um, that's why I talk about here. I have more links to those articles. Valerian, um, it's a great purple plant. Um, this is used for insomnia, good for if you can't sleep, uh, for your nerves as well, for anxiety, your muscle cramps, and then your tensions. Uh, Bromelain, okay, this is one I use commonly and I still use it just about every single day. Um, it's usually found in supplements. It's found in um, enzymes. It's found in the pineapples, right? That's where it's common. That's the, that's the foundation source where you're going to find it at. And what it does is it, it um, brings blood circulation. It reduces the swelling. It gives you a healthy immune system. And it's remov it removes any damaged tissue, which is the most amazing thing because when you have a scar, right? This is where I get into proteolytic enzymes. Proteolytic enzymes allow for you to have more enzymes in your body. When you get older, as you hit that 27 and older phase, um, you start to lose a lot of those enzymes that can come and heal your wound properly. And instead of there having to be a debris of what's called fibrin, which builds up after you have a scar to heal it, there's so much excessive of it in there. And so you need a way to get that excessive fibrin out because if it keeps building up, the chances of getting another scar are much, much greater. So you need to supplement more of that into your body in order to heal properly. Um, and so this is gonna remove damaged tissue. Turmeric, I still use that every single day. And it's my go-to these days because, uh, I've, you know, me, I'm feeling a lot better now. My back is a lot, in a place where I can um, do things more freely because I followed steps, right? I followed a pattern and I followed my habits and I didn't stay down on myself or feeling bad. Um, so turmeric is one with curcumin, with bioprene. Those are the best ones to go through. Um, and again, you can get access to more articles that help you. No, there's nothing here that I'm selling you to. This is just more information that you can get access to. And just make sure you go through it. It gives you step-by-steps. Um, bone broth. Yes, a lot of people are like, bone broth? Maybe you're thinking the same thing, like you didn't think bone broth. But bone broth is a very common household thing to do. Um, and it's actually a go-to that most people try to use. And in here I talk about how to get it set up and how to do this for a herniated disc. I have herniated, a herniated disc article on how to heal it with bone broth and how to go through it. Um, and then standing up is a natural way, right? That's, that's kind of an obvious one, how to relieve your lower back pain naturally. Just keep keeping your back straight and then stand up more often than you do sit down because as we sit down, we like to hunch our back. As we stand up, um, at least we can work on seeing where our muscles are. They're in balance, or are they balanced and how to work on them. Usually one side of your body is out of balance and the other side has to work 10 times harder. Uh, drink refreshing water. Remember, this was the first thing I talked about. Um, it's going to really help with this degeneration, herniated disc pain, bulging discs, thinning discs, uh, your facet joints. You know, they're going to get more lubricated. It's going to also help 
the uh, joints. So they get more lubricated and they, they actually help flow in more synovial fluid. That synovial fluid would also help protect the tissue around your joints and give you cushioning, right? So you need water in your daily life. Okay. Uh, 17, essential oils. Um, I've used essential oils for a while. I haven't been using them so much lately, but I have them. Um, they're not around me. They're actually in my room um, and I use them and I like to use them during the nighttime. That's what my routine was. Um, and essential oils are a great way to bring down inflammation, to bring down pain, um, to reduce swelling, um, and it increases your blood flow around your area like a heating pad would, right? Um, and then number 18 being here, CBD oil. Um, I know there's a controversy over CBD oil. Maybe you've used it, maybe you haven't. Um, but this is a very good one, okay? Um, I've used CBD oil, CBD oil for some time, uh, tinnicures, and in different like supplements, gummies, and there's different ways of congesting them. Um, and I'll actually go through this even more in my other articles. You can click through and find out more. But they relieve pain, anxiety. Um, they help you with joint pain. Um, they help you with muscle pain. They're not the, I wouldn't say the best for joint pain, but they do well. I would go more with the supplement route um, or a cream route, depending on the intensity, right? Um, but CBD oil is really good. It helps you mentally as well. It helps you um, with your, you know, peripheral neuropath skills, which is basically how your mind functions with your body. And it really blocks those pain signals from your nerves reaching from like the middle of your knee all the way up to the brain. And then it helps you physically, which, which is also a good thing. Calms you down, doesn't give you a high. It's not, you know, uh, if you want synthetic CBD oil, it has less than 0.3% of THC, which is fine, um, which is good for more chronic pain, okay? If you don't have like chronic, chronic pain, um, then more of a, a natural uh, without synthetic can go for you. And that, again, if you want to learn about that, it's all in here. Uh, number 19, talk with a therapist, okay? This is one that we don't want to do, and I know that feeling of like, I have to reach out to somebody, but it really helps. It really helps just to sit down with somebody, even if it's a family member first. Talk through it and see what problems you're having. Um, if you're talking to me, we can talk about it and see what can help you and what's the right solution for you. So that's really good. And, you know, as much as 59% of people have reduced their lower back pain just by doing that, right? It helps on your cognitive behavior. It changes your thought patterns. Um, and that's really going to help. Number 20, focus your brain. So one thing at a time, if I'm here um, reading a book, I want to focus my time on reading a book. If I want to focus on exercising, I need to focus on exercising. If I want to focus on sleeping properly. I got to focus on excuse me, I got to focus on that. Do one thing at a time. Don't do multiple things at once because your mind will get distracted and it'll get buried in this chaotic world that you don't want to get into. And that's going to further cause your pain and your habits aren't going to be best for you. Um, so what is the best thing you can do? And I talk about this, everybody has a different kind of pain. And I go back to that when, right? Everybody can use a massage. Uh, everybody can use a chiropractic care. Everybody can use a heating pad, creams, but when is the time for you to use this is a big question. Um, and so I've made that easier for you, you know, whether you have a degenerative disc, herniated disc, um, ankylosis, spondylolisthesis, spondylolisthesis, arthritis, rheumatoid, osteoarthritis, whatever this pain might be, hereditary, um, there's different ways about going about it. Um, you know, and I have action plans in this article for acute pain, for chronic pain. Here's your option A. Um, and it goes through, it's more. And then, I also have, you know, another video. This is a video that um, I'm also going to link into the description so you can actually check that out. Um, but, you know, and I also have a remote back pain system here, which takes you through a journey, depending on where you are in your life, to what needs to go next. Like, you're going to learn about chronic inflammation, and then after chronic inflammation, it'll start you with exercise. Here's how to do this for hamstrings. Here's how to do this for hips. Here's how to do this for your thighs. And then after you're done with that, if you have um, stronger pain, how to do walking versus swimming and so forth, right? And it goes through all that. But this is what I want to tell you now. What I have created is a guide, okay? This is like an ebook guide that's going to help you. Here, let me see if I can find it here. Um, it's not in here, but what this, what this guide is going to give you is it's going to give you the steps on what you should be doing just about every day how to manage your back pain in about five days. And so what this is going to do, it's going to really help you understand what you should do in the mornings 
afternoons, evenings, and at night. And it's going to really show you how I do things and what I had to go through my journey to be able to get to where I am. Um, and of course, everybody's pain is different. So I give you different options depending on what your pain levels are. Um, and it's going to show you how to manage your back pain, right? Um, it's going to show you how to manage it and control it every single day so you can get back to doing things at work. So you can go ahead and get back to doing things with your sport life to get back to doing things with your family and friends and to uh, really show you like when it's time to use maybe a heating pad versus when it's time to in the morning use you wake up like for example you'll wake up in the morning do this stretch get out of bed if you need a heating pad use this heating pad for five minutes or so go to get breakfast after you're done with eating this at breakfast do this next do that and then thereafter. so it's really going to go through all that um, this is how to manage your back pain day to day and then I should have another one that um, will show you how to manage it day-to-day -day naturally with extra natural ways of doing it. Um, if that one isn't out yet, it will be out soon, but you can get, ac get access to this free book that's underneath in the description. So make sure once you're done here, you go underneath and you get that free book to managing your pain um, naturally. A lot of people are taking advantage of that and it's really helping them out. So you'll see more information on, on you know, how it's being helped, uh, how others are being helped by this. People are reaching out to me um, so make sure you take a look at that and then go through it patiently and just guide yourself on how to do things. Um, right. And then go from there um, and so forth. So if you need more information, again, look in the description, everything will be in there. Um, if you have a comment, make sure you leave me a comment down below and I can help you out um, personally. If you need help, I can do that too. Um, and we'll go from there. Um, so that's all I wanted to say. Hopefully you got these like 20 plus ways and they were 20 plus ways of going ahead and treating your lower back pain naturally, getting rid of it naturally, where it really comes into play, getting rid of it naturally is having a plan. You can do things day to day. And that's what most people don't tell you that you should take a plan to do this every single day. Yeah. Everybody can do something in one day, then take a break, come back to it 10 days later. Oh, that's how you got rid of your lower back pain naturally. Do you want to, you know, help the symptoms or do you want to actually try to get rid of this day to day? So then you get to a point where you don't have to be dependent on conservative treatments. You can transition from different things where you don't have to do things like that. All right, guys, that's it for now. And again, if you have any comments, leave me one below, check out that free book in the description and there's this article as well. And there'll be more information. All right. Thanks.